Hello and welcome to using the Excel input form. The Excel input form or the EIF is used to input all of the data into your company's payroll. Today on the screen we have a sample company called 123 Industries Proprietary Limited and I'm just going to run through some formats of some formats and positions of all the data on the form and what it means in terms of uh, Aussie Pay generating your payroll. The first thing I'd like to point out is your company name will be up in the top left as I'm showing on the screen. The input sheet that it relates to or your, rather your pay cycle being the either the monthly employees or if you have a fortnightly cycle your fortnightly employees or your weekly or quarterly employees. This will be demonstrated up in the top left just under your company name and if you have multiple pay cycles for your company, you will have an Excel input form for every single pay cycle. And then date is for the days you wish to pay your employees. The accounting date is t means that any information processed in this payroll will be reported in the period or the month that is entered into the accounting date. So as we can see, it's under the 30th of the 9th, 2014. So all of the information processed within this payroll will be reported in the September month-end reports. The pay date is indicative of the release date of the payroll. So if the pay date is the 12th, the pay slips for the employees will show the 13th and your bank file will release the funds from your bank account on the 12th. Going down lower, we have a list of all of the current active employees within your company with their name as I'm circling on the screen. On the right hand, after that on the right hand side there's the cost centre. The, after that there is the number of pays this information is for. If, they, if the payer is to be taxed over two of the periods, this can be updated to reflect any number from 1 to 100. Moving over there to the standard hours in column F. These are the standard hours that are against the employee's master records. For instance, if we look at Sharon Howe, she will is st on a standard month is paid 162.5 hours. And looking above her at Rishi, that employee is paid 173.33 standard hours. This information is pre-populated upon the finalisation of your previous payroll and is generated from what the employee's master records say. From columns H, as I'm demonstrating, all the way over to column AB, these are the pay codes and the transactional data that will be used to process your payroll. There are two types of formats within all of the pay codes on your EIF. One is hours, which as demonstrated on this sheet under normal, is going to be the normal number of hours the employee is going to be paid for. Over to the next column with ORD 1.5. For our sample company, this is representing time and a half as overtime. And this also will be based on a number of hours. Moving over to, once again to the right, we have sick hours. And then in column K and L, we have the other format, which is the date. We can all put in the date for, for example, sick leave. This employee will be 4.5 hours and they will be taking sick leave as it's in September on the 16th of September and their last day of that leave will be the 16th of September also. These dates can be imported into the payroll and reflected on all the leave history reports you would receive. 
Going on to other pay types other than leave, if we scroll over to the right, we have an example in column AA as a bonus code. Other transactional data such as the bonus code can be entered as dollars. And while not like leave, which was a result in a different dollar value, the bonus amount will be processed as is. For example, if you enter $1,000 bonus in the input sheet, when we process your payroll, it will reflect a $1,000 bonus on your transaction reports. Column AC is, as, as you can see, it is a sum of all of the hours that you're going to play your, pay your employees. And just to the right of that is a section where you can fill in your notes if, for instance, a particular pay code is not on your input sheet or if you would like to leave us with some set of special instructions. In column AE, there is a link to generate an email to terminate an employee. What this will do, we'll generate a template in your email client which will go to the service centre as demonstrated in the to address, the service centre at aussiepay.com.au. The subject up here will indicate is a pre-populated template depending on the employee you clicked the link on, saying that you wish to terminate Nicole Kyle in one, two, three industries proprietary limited. Within this email, you can update this pre-populated template if you would like to pay the employee's final pay in an ad hoc payroll, in which case you would enter yes or why into the brackets next to today. However, if you wish to just be included into the next payroll, you can just click yes into the next pay brackets. Just below that, just requiring to fill in the last day of their employment, if any payment is required. In this particular instance, there may be a case where you have already paid the employee their final entitlements based on a previous calculation provided by us, or if there's any particular final processes that the employee themselves must complete prior to receiving their pay. Under that, there's the reason for termination. Here we have resignation, dismissal, redundancy and other, which it does ask you to specify, which as an example, other reasons could be retirement or intercompany transfer. There is a section where you can write special instructions, which might be a different pay code, an extra bonus, or any other payments you wish to make. This email can then just be sent to the service center by clicking send in your email client as such. If you wish to change the cost center to which any of your transactional data applies, in column C, you can select the employee the change relates to and you can pick a new cost centre from your drop-down list. The current drop-down list just reflects the sample company's selection of cost, of cost centres and this list will reflect your, the active cost centres that you have in your database. I'm going to select Melbourne Sales, particularly if this person was on secondment or just has to be costed as a one-off instead of their master record. If you'd like to add extra lines for employees so that some of their data is processed in different cost centres, you can go to the Add Pay Sheet button, you select the employee you wish to add an extra line for, you click the Add Pay Sheet button, and another line will appear under it, at which point you can go to the right on the extra line, adjust the cost centre, and then populate all of the other columns with the data you want to go to that cost centre. If any employee, possibly a new starter or a terminated employee that you wish to make a payment for, does not appear on your Excel input form, 
please advise your power or consultant and we can organise a new sheet to go out to yourself which will contain. In addition, if you would like to add additional pay codes to your form, just let your pay or consultant know and we can organise that as well. When the Excel input complete, form is complete, you can save it and you can send it to your payroll consultant to service at aussiepay.com.au and we will process your payroll. If additional instructions are required, just include it in the body of your email and we will process accordingly.